So moving right on, we're going to have a, um, a conversation now between uh, two uh, experts in the field. First is uh, my colleague, Jim Hightower, who's the Chief for Business Development and Security at the Open Room. Um, Jim manages all the security and risk management programs and standards activities in that area. He holds several security and risk certifications, including CISSP, GSEC, and of course, the Open Fair Foundation. And a warm welcome back to the virtual stage for a longtime contributor, Steve Whitlock. Um, Steve is a retired cybersecurity professional who continues as a volunteer supporting both the US government and the Open Group. Prior to that, he was Chief Security and Technology, uh, Chief of Security, Strategy and Technology, forgive me, for the Information Security Solutions Organization in Boeing Defense, Space and Security. And before that, he was Chief Strategist for Boeing IT Information Security. In this role, he provided strategic support for Boeing's long-term information security capabilities, including tracking emerging technologies and the changing threat landscape, as well as helping to influence the direction of the information security industry in support of Boeing's global presence. In the discussion today, uh, Jim and Steve will focus on the origins of Zero Trust and the work and influence of the Jericho Forum on the current ZTA project. So a warm welcome to uh, from the Open Group to Jim Hightower and Steve Whitlock. Over to you guys. Thanks, Steve. Um, so, um, although the uh, the term zero trust is is really a new buzzword, um, its origins go back uh, quite a while, 13 years ago or so, to some of the early Jericho Forum publications. So I thought uh, having Steve Whitlock here on this discussion, having you here, um, would be uh, particularly useful because you were there in many of the early Jericho discussions and you're still a part of the security forum. So welcome, Steve. Thank you. Um, so I, I guess I'll start the, the, the Q&A by asking um, you about some of that early Jericho work. Um, you know, the Jericho forum was thinking about the failures and limitations of the perimeter security model very early on. Uh, so I'm curious how you relate some of that early Jericho form work on deparameterization uh, to the current zero trust thinking. Um, what's, what's your perspective on that? So let me describe a little bit the origins of Jericho. Um, in 1998, uh, Neil Postman gave a talk called Five Things We Need to Know About Technological Change. And his fourth point was, Technological change is not additive, it is ecological, which, which means it changes everything. And uh, the internet was one of those changes. The internet essentially, um, when enterprise connected, they replaced the physical perimeter with a virtual perimeter. And in the early days, um, you could put a firewall in and just sort of be protected. But as businesses wanted to leverage the internet, it sort of stop working both from a security and a business perspective. Um, some of the business ideas and the Jericho Forum was originally formed by a collection of CISOs in London that were business focused, um, was that a hardened perimeter strategy was at odds with their current and their future business needs and that it was financially unsustainable. From a vulnerability perspective, if you're gonna let email in, or if you're going to let web traffic in through port 80 and 443, then the perimeter is not really helping very much anymore. And, and it's still a, okay to have something for a noise barrier, but a determined attack will just ride in on port 80. Um, the holy grail for many organizations, um, at least the one I represented, was fine-grained access control for data and applications between enterprises. And enterprises that didn't necessarily have leverage over each other, so there had to be negotiation. Essentially, if you can solve that problem, most other scenarios are a subset of it. So the Jericho Forum began by um, illuminating the problem with a series of publications, and they, they called the problem deperimeterization. They didn't really have a name for the solution, but Zero Trust is sort of a name for the other side, the, the solution side. 
And they came up with a set of core principles and then eventually an architecture uh, focused on secure collaboration with an emphasis on identity and access control and data security. Uh, Zero Trust seems to be following a similar path. Um, there was some uptake uh, after the Jericho Forum launched, and it caught on with some products and some vendors as well as some end users, but I would say it hasn't been um, a complete success, and it's and the issues that drove the formation have not gone away. If, if anything, they've intensified. And so it's great that, the, that there's interest in zero trust architecture um, to, to carry on and, and try and solve these problems. Um, I guess I would say, well, the Jericho Forum may have been a little bit ahead of its time. Um, the emergence of DTA is evidence that businesses still need a way to collaborate securely. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're seeing here is a few of the Jericho Forum publications um, relating to depremerization uh, and pulled out of there some of the key points out of some of those. Um, out of the, you know, the, the many publications that were put out by the Jericho Forum, which ones do you think uh, were the most relevant uh, in kind of forecasting, um, you know, the, the world we live in today in terms of, you know, needing zero trust architectures to deal with the the issues that come with depermerization. So maybe the best place, and I apologize for not getting on the list, is, and all of these are available on the Open Group website, by the way, but the best place is probably the Jericho Forum Business Rationale for Depermerization, published in 19, I mean, in 2007, and it lists both business drivers and business benefits of a depermerized strategy. And it discusses why the change is disruptive. And I think some of the disruption is the reason why it's been slow to catch on. I think those drivers and benefits are still current, even though it's a pretty old publication. The next major document is one listed here, the Jericho Forum Commandments. And it lists, um, I believe, 11 specific commandments. These are really principles for designing um, your security systems and your architecture uh, to operate safely in, in this world. That was followed up a little while later by a set of commandments focused on identity and access control. Um, the trust ecosystem is, is, is a look at the systems and a trust taxonomy, and that was followed by a collaboration-oriented architecture framework as well some of which made its way into the, uh, um, the, the web environment. Um, if, if you go to the next page, um, I don't know how to turn the slide. There we go. Okay. Um, so while we focus on a second set of commandments or principles on, on identity and access control, the other um, big piece was data security. And we did end up with a draft of eight data security principles, but we didn't have enough time to, or didn't finish um, organizing and evaluating and, and improving them before the Jericho Forum shut down. So they ended up, there's just a draft that's out there, or maybe it's not out there. So we did take that experience and publish a paper called The Need for Data Principles, which has a pretty good roadmap that, that somebody, I don't know if GTA is interested, somebody could pick up and start from that. And some of these were put together and published in another um, open group document called Protecting Information Steps for a Secure Data Future. I think it's W142. Uh, much more recently, the Open Group Security Forum published a list of 20 principles, or we call them axioms. The difference between this and the Jericho Forum work is the Jericho Forum specifically focused on the differences that the loss of a perimeter um, made in security, whereas the axioms is focused on a broad security um, architecture. So it includes a few of the Jericho Forum uh, principles, but it uh, includes a much broader set that are designed 
to give you a complete, uh, you could generate a complete security architecture from it. We didn't want to publish one of these thousand page books you've memorized. We wanted a set of core um, axioms or principles that you could follow for almost any situation. And this was, by the way, joint work with the Sasmi Institute. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of switching gears a little bit and talking about zero trust uh, in, the, in the marketplace, if you will. Um, you see today a lot of vendors talking about having solutions that deliver zero trust. What's your perception of the current zero trust uh, solutions or better landscape? I think solutions now are better than they used to be, but I don't think there's a good enough focus on um, protecting data in transit and and as it as it's operated on by say your business partners, whether they're your suppliers or customers. And I'm, don't blame the vendors totally. The, they can't make product if people won't buy them. So there needs to be a better commitment investment on both vendors and customers for what's essentially a, a new paradigm or a, a new way of doing business securely. Mm -hmm. There are niche products out there. I would say there's not um, yet widespread acceptance. Okay. And it, I mean, it seems like those uh, products and solutions fall into two you know, pretty broad categories, ones that are focused on identity and access management and others that are focused more on data protection. Um, any thoughts about which of those areas is, is further along in terms of maturity? Um, I definitely think identity and access management is farther along. Um, we've, we've had a lot of industry initiatives. Um, we've had government in initiatives like USN stick. Um, one of the Jericho Forum founders, Paul Simmons, founded the Global Identity Forum. Uh, bridge certificate authorities have allowed us to use crypto more widely. Um, uh, credit cards and other cards with chips in them are much more common. Uh, it's data security where I think we're lagging quite a bit. Um, we need to find a more fine-grained approach, sort of something similar to a DRM, but it, it has to work between different vendor solutions and they have to allow different levels of data access based on user and data attributes. Um, you can't assume that your customer or your suppliers are going to buy the same security products. So interoperability is key here. And that means standard protocols and APIs. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that leads nicely into the, to the final question, which is um, what can, what, what, standards work is really needed here to move things forward in your view and what can standards organizations like the open group and others do to help enable and realize the promise of zero trust i think we need to encourage vendors to build products that are scalable and secure but also interoperable and the open group has a number of uh, supplier members um, and we need to encourage organizations to realize that some of these changes will be challenging, but they will better support their future. Um, and we have another number of large end users that with their purchasing power can, can help support that. And I realize the open group doesn't do protocols. I was pretty active in the IETF, but the open group is a good organizational place um, for pulling together other APIs and protocols and a lot of the pieces are there and, and creating an architecture and, a, and a, a holistic, comprehensive view. And I would just say that, that I would encourage organizations, both, both suppliers and uh, customers, to get involved and bring your challenges and potential solutions to the Open Group's uh, ZTA activity. Um, if we don't know what your exact problems are, we might miss something. And if, Got a piece of the solution that would be valuable. Um, so more involvement in the zero trust architecture work in the security form would be great. Okay. Uh, on that note, we'll go ahead and end. Um, Nikhil did uh, do a great job of outlining the ZTA project. So uh, if you're watching his presentation, um, we would have picked up on the various pieces of the project that are planned. Um, and we encourage you to get involved either by reaching out to Steve Borshert, who handles membership. Um, for the security forum or uh, just getting involved in the LinkedIn group to, to make your voice known. So with that, I'll hand it back, I guess, to you, Steve Nunn. 
Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Steve. Great to uh, hear your voice again, Mr. Whitlock. Um, and uh, thank you for your uh, for your insights. And um, yes, anyone interested in getting involved in that in that project, uh, the details are on the screen, and they'll be in the um, post event documentation, um, post event materials as well. So um, thank you both very much. Uh, virtual round of applause. <laughs>